Hey guys, <clears throat> well, I had to take a break from my G0602 CNC lathe project because I had a job to come up and it's for my father-in-law for his Project 50 Chevy. My stuff kind of got put to the side. Uh, you can't keep your father-in-law waiting. So, he's about to finish up this 50 Chevy project. And when he gets it all done, I'll get some video and some pictures of that so you can see uh, you see what the truck looks like. But um, he's had me make several parts um, throughout the build, and I enjoyed doing it, and they were kind of challenging. So uh, now I've got to make these. These are adapters for the mirrors, the side mirrors, uh, spacers, I should say. The truck was not made for... Uh, these side mirrors they're not big mirrors they're kind of small they have like a built-in turn signal pretty neat little mirrors and he wanted to use them but the problem is with these mirrors the the passenger side uh, looking from the driver's side to the passenger side the mirrors just you can't see anything it sticks out uh, it angles out too far so he wanted a wedge shaped spacer just to kind of angle it the right direction so this is what we came up with uh now something new completely new to me and for those of you that have used um solidworks and some of the other 3d cad programs uh, you might be familiar with this but i'm not but this is uh, autodesk fusion 360 that i'm giving a giving it a try uh it's completely free to hobbyists and startups with a income of less than $100,000. And to me, that's that was awesome. So I have used SketchUp in the past to do my drawings because I like the visual three-dimensional um, aspect of it. But Autodesk I came out with this Fusion 360 and it's a cloud-based CAD CAM program and it has a lot of features for machining that I'm not used to. I've been using CAM BAM for uh, the past three three years or so and it's it's a great CAM program and, and I like it but it it works completely different than 360 does. You basically do a line drawing in CAM BAM and then from there you input the values for your CAM. It just shows you the toolpath. It doesn't show you a actual drawing, a uh, three-dimensional drawing like this. So uh, this is Fusion 360. Now well, uh, you can see I've drawn my project and what's cool is it has this little cube over here so that you can, if you notice when I click when I move the mouse over I can grab this corner and just move it and rotate it. If I want to go to the top view I can just click on the top. If I want to go to the home view it gives me an isometric view of the model and like I said you could just click on any side corner and grab it and move it. You can also mouse click middle button click in the center here and you can pan uh, to move it around. I'm actually rolling, I didn't mean to do that, but but you can pan. Uh, it has these buttons down here that are about the same. Uh, this is the orbit button, which is, moves it around orbital. It has a pan button, which is a hand, and you can just slide it back and forth. If you want to just look at the top view, you can click on this look at button and select which face you want to look at, and it'll swivel around to that. It also has a fit button where you can just, it'll fit it to the screen. Uh, very cool. But it has your um, two-dimensional milling and your three-dimensional milling. And there are a lot of uh, tutorials from Fusion 360 and there's several other uh, people that are using this CAM program, CAD CAM program, so I'm not going to go into all the different um, features but this is the part I'm trying to machine uh, this is the first part that I've 
trying to machine with this program and uh, not knowing what I'm doing. When I first generated the toolpath, the G code, it was like 80,000 lines of code, which might be fine for a Haas or, you know, some of these big, you know, $50,000 CNC machines. But for my little X2 Mini Mill, it just froze up Mach 3. My old XP computer, it just kind of froze up. It didn't want to handle that. So there was a couple of things. I was either obviously asking it to do too much uh, or not knowing what I was doing as far as which different uh, machining operations uh, to use. But I, with some emails back and forth with the... Uh, with, uh, the help desk at Autodesk, uh, Jeff, he helped me out, did a great job. Uh, we went back and forth a few times and figured it out. And so these are the machining operations I've came up with now. And uh, I did a, shot some video on doing a uh, do, running this code in with, on some wood just to see what, how it's going to turn out. And so here's this video. This program ran for like an hour. Uh, this was an hour long program uh, in total length. So I'm gonna, of course, edit it, but um, just to show you some of the operations and how it goes. Okay, so we're gonna be testing out the new G code generated by CNC Fusion. Uh, got a piece of a uh, two by four here. And uh, I'm still playing around with the CNC Fusion. This is the first actual code that, um, I've generated so we'll see how it goes and we'll get this uh, wedge this mirror wedge adapter uh, and we'll run this code and see what happens 2000 rpms this is a 3 8 inch end mill Made it through the G-code. Uh, this contour 
operation and something's not right on it but um because it was supposed to leave me like a edge all the way around like you saw in the drawing something happened there but we'll uh we'll take a look at it and see can't figure it out Fusion 360 has adaptive clearing which is something that i'm not used to but it's supposed to maximize your specs maximize the tooth load and the chip load to take the maximum amount of chips out as possible and so because of my mini mill and i'm not to take able to take as deep of cut with it it was generating a lot more lines of code but this is the adaptive clearing for this particular operation and you can see uh, it's taking very light cuts but we can run this simulation and you can see what's going on but this is very cool because I'm not used to this adaptive clearing I'm just used to basically um, radius X and Y movements uh, and not taking a full depth of cut now I decided to after this program ran for an hour I decided well let's not get too crazy with our first little project using 360 let's uh let's just make a couple of different setups so this was my first run and it turned out good uh, the actual part turned out fairly well uh, it's the right size everything's good the angles great uh, I, I wanted to reduce the amount of lines of code and the time it's going to take to mill it machine it so what I'm going to do is I'm going to turn my workpiece like this in the first setup and I'm going to face this and then put this little uh, edge on the top and then uh, then I'll reposition the stock like so to do the pocket and do the profile and I, I think and bore these holes I think the I'll have five different machining operations when I'm done running your simulation you can see all these red marks down here these are collisions where my tool where my um, tool or tool holder I should say hit the part uh, that's pretty helpful uh, I did my own tools I did my own tools and drew my Tormac TTS tool holders and put them in there. Um, so that's pretty cool. And you can put all those input, all those dimensions so that uh, they'll be in there. And it'll give you a warning if there's a collision, which is helpful for, for me. So now I'm going to run the code. I redid the drawing and redid the code. And I'm just going to do two different setups. I have setup number one here and I'm going to have the workpiece uh, mounted flat. You can see how my workpiece is at an angle because I'm just going to mill flat. Now this is the way that 360 does it but you can see my tool holder is also angled but in reality the workpiece will be vertical and so will the tool. And so I'm just going to face it for the first op, I'm just going to face the piece of material. Then I'm going to do this edge right here with the contour. And then I'll reset up. I'll put the workpiece back in and set it back up to where the workpiece is square. And so this will actually be sitting in the workpiece just the way it is. And then I'll do my adaptive clearing. And I'll be taking a full depth of cut but very light passes 
and then I'll come back and do a contour and get the pocket and the outside edge and then bore my two, two holes and hopefully that'll that'll turn out good so I'm gonna do that and I'll shoot some video on that we're gonna run that in aluminum okay so we're working on a uh, adapter working on a working on the mirror spacer and I cut my wedge I took a square piece and then cut it in a wedge shape and now I've got it leveled in here and I'm just gonna uh, face this and put a profile on it. So let's get started. Okay, so now we're going to uh, basically do some adaptive clearing and we're going to clear out the rough out the shape and do a pocket and put a couple of holes in it. thinks that it's a square piece but I already had done one step one set up clear to some of that off so I'm taking it real slow and easy because this is the first time I'm using this uh, fusion 360 uh, cam and uh, so I'm not quite sure what the X2 can do so going kind of slow
All right, well, here's our finished product. This is our mirror spacer. Uh, it's basically just a wedge, and it was meant to uh, angle the mirror a little bit. Um, it's adjusted as far as it'll go, and it's still quite not right. wasn't quite right. So uh, my father-in-law wanted this wedge, and uh, turned out good. Uh, that was the first time I had used um, Autodesk uh, Fusion 360 uh, to draw it as well as write the code. And I used some of the cam functions from from that program and it's way too aggressive for the uh, X2 Mini Mill. But I was able to uh, you know make some changes in the parameters and, and get it to uh, cut right. Um, it has adaptive clearing cam uh, function which just basically goes around the outside in small increments full depth of cut until it gets to the profile and so I had to bring that down to only go about a quarter inch deep so I had to make like five passes uh, around to get it but turned out good uh, and I'll definitely be using it in the future I just got a, you know, this was the first project using it, so um, it's going to take some getting used to. Uh, I'm not quite used to all the 3D cam uh, functions, but we'll get used to it. My next video, I'll get back on the G0602 and start working on the X mounts. Thanks for watching. Have a great day.